Okay. Hi, welcome to NDE TV. I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Brittany Workman, and she's going to tell us about her near-death experience. It wasn't too long ago, a couple of years. Yep. What led up to it? Um, a lot led up to it. I think um, it was just I. I can't explain exactly why that day. Um, I have struggled with suicidal thoughts since I was 11. I've never tried before once in my life up until that day. That was the first and only time that I've ever tried. Um, and I tried to take my life that day. Um, I drank two vials of anesthetic uh, liquid and it stopped my breathing. Um, and that's how I had my near-death experience. How old um, were you? She looked young. I was 30. Well, I'm 34, almost oh. 35. So okay. I was 33 at the time. Okay. So. So what happened? Um, well, I, I sat down in my living room, but I decided that I wanted to go into the bedroom. So as I was going into the bedroom, that's where I fell and um, I fell onto the floor and I closed my eyes. And as I closed my eyes here, when I blinked and opened my eyes, I opened them into um, a different place. Um, it looked much like my bedroom, um, but there was a lot of different colors. Um, and the best way I could describe it is all of the bad stuff was taken out of it. Um, like it was, it was just cleaner. It was, um, it was just different. It looked a little different, but I turned around and that's where I saw a field. Um, and it looked much like a field on, on what you would find on earth. But like I said, you know, more colors, different colors I've never seen before. Um, and I just had this, this overwhelming feeling of joy, of warmth, of love, um, of light, if that makes any sense to anybody, um, of connectivity, uh, um, like you're connected to everything and everyone. Um, and then that's when I heard this voice and I don't know if it was through, you know, listening like my ears or if it was telepathy, but I heard this voice and it said, this is level one. Um, and as soon as I blinked, I opened my eyes again and I'm on a different level. And this, the second level, um, looked completely different. It was in this big house. I would describe it as, um, big walls, big ceilings, all gold, very, uh, lots of light. Um, but that's where I saw my family and there was a big table there and all of my family was there. My grandma, my grandpa, some, uh, my uncle, uh, a lot of family members that I didn't know, but I knew I was related to, um, but at the front of the table was my mom and my dog bear. And I thought, well, this is weird because they don't belong here. They're, they're not deceased. So at that point I thought, okay, well maybe I'm just having a dream. This is weird. So I hear this voice and it says that, um, this is level two, your family's on level two. Um, you're needed on level three, but your family can't come with you. Are you okay with that? And I thought I would not have, um, I thought I would not be able to make a decision as quickly as I did. Um, my grandma, I was really close to, 
and she passed in 2009. So I haven't seen her in a long time. And so I was really enjoying seeing her, but for somehow up there or wherever I was, I made that quick decision and I was like, yep, let's go. I'm ready. Um, so I, it was pretty much just a, a blink. You know, I quickly said goodbye to my family and with a blink, I'm up to this different level. And that's when I saw whoever was talking to me. Um, it was this, I can pretty much describe it as just a light. I don't know if it was a girl or a guy, the voice sounded more female. Um, but I, I can't really, I don't know for sure. Um, but the voice said that this is level three. This is where you're needed. This is where higher, um, people who are more high spiritually, how I'm, I can't, really remember exactly how they described it, but it was like um, how the more spiritually developed maybe um, people reside or are, um, and that's where you're needed. But first you have to finish what you started. So I started falling through the levels back down into my body and that's where I woke up on the floor. And then I crawled over to the phone and I called. Um, and I don't really remember much of going to the hospital or the or the hospital itself. Um, but I remember most, if not all of that experience. And not two weeks later, um, my mom passes and she passed um i had no idea she was going to pass there she was not ill um she was only 55 she passed in her sleep um it was she passed of uh they said afib and she was never diagnosed with it before um she was fine the the day before she went to sleep and then just passed in her sleep so um Were you still in the kind of, hospital no um i was out so um, that was at least good. I got to see, uh, you know, her at least at the hospital when they got her there and said that she had passed. So, um, and then I got to, you know, do the funeral stuff. So, um, but yeah, I had no idea that she was going to pass. And then not two months later, my dog passes. So that sealed the deal for me. I, um, I know what I saw was um, legit for me. I I can't believe that um, that I saw my mom up there and and bear and and now they're not here now. So um, yeah. How long were you in the hospital? Um, I was only in the hospital for a day, um, and then they released me because uh, I wasn't suicidal anymore. Um, that was one other thing was, um, when, as soon as I woke up, um, I had no suicidal thoughts and that, like I said, it, I've always struggled with suicidal thoughts since I was like 11. Um, so as soon as I woke up, I noticed that that was gone and that voice inside of me telling me that I was, um, you know, not good enough or not um not what else did it say you know not worthy um that inner voice it was silenced ever since that day so yeah. I haven't struggled with it ever since were you able to tell anybody about your experience after you had it oh yeah I mean, at the um, hospital yeah, I woke up and I told my husband immediately and he thought I was crazy. Um, he He's not, uh, well, he wasn't very spiritual. Um, he would label himself as an atheist. And then after my mom died, he looked at me and was like, oh, 
that's a little weird. And then after Bear died, he kind of talked to me and he said, well, I don't know what to believe anymore, but it, you definitely have uh, opened my eyes to some things because that's a little weird. So um, I definitely have at least, um, I've told him. And then after my mom passed, um, I, I wish I would have told my family what I saw before my mom passed, um, but I didn't. And after my mom passed, I told my sister and my dad and all my family members because I wanted them to know what I knew. I wanted them to feel as comforted as I did knowing that she was okay and that she was where she was. Um, so I, I did tell them afterwards. It seems like a gift, doesn't it? I mean, to be given some a vision like that, a experience to bring it, you it comfort does. in a lot of ways. It does. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened if it didn't happen that way. I mean, I had always told myself growing up, my mom couldn't bury us. I mean, she always told us that. So I knew I was stuck here until my mom went. And after my mom passed, I, I knew, well, it was fair game after that. So maybe that's why I had never tried suicide before. And so maybe that's why I had that um, premonition was because my mom wanted me to know that I was going to be okay after she left. Um, that's kind of how I like to look at it. So did you feel changed in any other ways after that? Any kind of like psychic experiences or anything? Intuition? Um, I definitely feel more attached or at least closer to that side. I feel like, um, I feel How do I explain it? I feel like if I figured out how to work on a couple of things of myself, I could probably fine tune to be able to do some of that stuff. I, I think I'm close to it. I don't think I'm all the way there but I do feel like I do get, um, you know, voices inside of me that are not, that I keep thinking are maybe myself, but now I'm questioning if it's not other things. Um, so I'm really starting to learn more about myself and um, figuring that out. I think all of us have that inner voice that is connected and that we all have that power too we just have to work on ourselves to be able to do it so i have um, found I, more i talk about it tell someone about it share it or writing it the more clear things become for me an age for me i, I seemed like i had to be a certain age before i could see things in a different way it's just something that come with age for me personally but I, uh, to me, I, it seems like I can see things that are connected more easily. Um, like, how do I explain it? Um, like just with things in life, I can just, um, I find the reasons for why people come into my life, I think. And I find the interconnections, like we have the same birth dates or they have the same, um, you know, there's just so many similarities that I can find. And I really think that that um, is something that I'm working on. 
I really feel like there's something there. I just don't know what it is yet. Does it feel like sometimes things are just magnified or make you stop and take notice, like pause? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It seems like it's, uh, it takes time to train your mind to pay attention to those alerts, pauses, whatever, you know, person calls them, um, like take notice of this. I'm like, why is this such a big deal? It's a big deal for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. My grandmother used to talk about levels. She'd say there's something in the Bible. They talked about levels. And I, and I was feeling like a smart aleck that day. And I said, and let me guess, you're going to be on the top level. Well, yeah. <laughs> not to not to criticize you being on the top level. It's just, she was just like, everybody called her a Bible thumper. You know, she was just always looking down her nose at everybody. And the one time I finally spoke up to her. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I had not even heard of levels before. I didn't read the Bible. I had no idea. I like to me, heaven was just this one plain existence that we all got to go to. You know, I didn't think of it as anything else. And then as soon as I woke up in my body here and was able to, you know, after I left the hospital, I started Googling levels of heaven because that's what really stuck out to me in that. And I kept seeing things that, you know, other people had saw or, you know, references to the Bible and, and I couldn't believe, I think that's when I first started believing that, that I did have an experience was, was that because I just had no idea I had never even fathomed it before. And then here I, I had that experience and then I could validate it by finding other people or other things that had it referenced it. So I thought that was really cool. Do you talk about it very much now? I try to talk about it as much as I can. Um, I feel like that is a gift that was given to me that, I mean, especially with animal lovers, I know losing my bear, bear was 10. So, I mean, it was only 10 years out of my life, but he was my, he, he was my kid. I don't have children. And I think he's, I think if I had children, he would still be like a child. You know what I mean? I think they're very close to our family. And I know that there's a lot of people that struggle with losing their pets and so i i definitely try to share it with anybody who's lost um pets who are struggling um because a lot of people um you, you know you hear all the near-death experience ones but it's even rarer for the pet ones so i definitely try to share as much as i can um, just to give people comfort. Have you heard of Howard Storm? I haven't. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a, an in the ear that went to hell. And I heard him say before that the only thing that saved him in his depression um, was his dog. What would happen to his dog? And that uh -huh. made him... <clears throat> sorry decide to stick around so yeah there I have two dogs and two well I had one cat but then after my mom passed I took her cat in so I technically have two cats now but um they're they're my everything so and I don't think I think if you have pets or maybe even children, that first one that you have, it's that first love. And it's not that you love them more. It's just a different love because it was your first. Mm -hmm. So, and, but that was bear for me. So bear will always have that, that place in my heart. So. 
our dog Ranger came up missing one time and my husband was so frantic. You know, it was like a child was missing. And luckily we found him just by miracle after miracle. It was so weird. But um then the neighbors had said, Oh, they felt so bad for him. He was so upset. I can't you know, we see my dog. Oh. Yeah, they're they're amazing as my cat is hanging himself in his in the curtain. <laughs> Yesterday but I yeah. was doing one of these and my cat made noise the entire time. As soon as we started, he said it found a pen and paper on the floor and was banging that stuff all over the place. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It's like I don't have your attention, so I'm gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. So uh yeah, is there anything I else to share it. that you want to share? Um Just that if anybody watching this or, you know, any anything that I've ever done, you know, is feeling um, suicidal, you know, don't don't act on it. This don't take this as a, oh, I should try kind of a thing. Take it from me and just know that there is something out there and and do what you need to do here everybody has a purpose and you just don't know what that purpose is going to be and the best way i can explain that is if you give a homeless guy 50 dollars, and then he goes and spends it on alcohol and you say oh well that was a waste of money. He should have got groceries on it with it. You know, you don't know that $50 that you gave him, the purpose might not have been for the homeless guy, but it might would have been for the person who watched you give him the $50. And now that guy is going and helping somebody else who desperately needed it that day. So you just don't know the inner webbing of things that you do and how it affects other people. So your purpose, you, you, everybody has a purpose and just remember that you don't take your bad things with you when you go, you don't take the depression, you don't take the hurt, you don't take the, the mortgages, you don't take the, the failed jobs, you don't take the divorces. So just try to live life, you know, daily here and know that it gets better. I saw something on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, a um, guy said, I want to tell everybody this story that just happened to me. He said um, he went to buy, it was either washer or dryer, secondhand off someone. And the guy wanted $500 for it. And he said, well, um, would you mind if I gave you 400 and I got a new baby coming and I'm really sorry, but it would mean the world to me. And he said, okay. So he took $400 for it. He got home, clean out the lint trap and the $400 in the lint trap. And he got a text message from the guy. He said, look, look in the lint trap. He says, congratulations on your child. And uh -huh. I mean, probably thousands of people bawled like I did reading this. And it was just that gesture that spread out like nobody would ever usually things like that are done in private. Nobody ever hears, but it was just so cool that he was able to express it. And you could tell it just meant the world to this guy, not just financially, but that someone would do something like that in this day and age. So that was really cool. There was somebody and here um, that I can't remember if it was, $20 or $100 bills. I can't remember what they were doing, but they were sliding um, bills into the diaper boxes at Walmart. So when people would buy a diaper box, they would actually get money in it too. Wow. And so just an anonymous, yeah. I mean, just amazing things like that are just, and that's what this world is about. And I think that's what we, 
are, we easily forget. We get into our work, we get into our home life we, and we think, okay, that's what this world is about. We are supposed to work. We're supposed to, no, we're supposed to help each other. We're supposed to make those connections. We're supposed to grow together. And if we're not helping each other, we're not doing our job. And if somebody's really not been into making those little acts of kindness, they need to try it because nothing feels better. You know, slip over. We sometimes my husband and I will tell the waitress, come over here. It's like, give us their ticket and we'll do it honestly. And then we'll sit and watch. And it's like, why can't I pay it? Who paid it? What? And they're looking around and we're just, you know, <laughs> and it feels so good. Just a little thing or go across toll bridge and, you know, pay for the next couple people behind me. You know, here's a few bucks and just something's like, oh, wow. You know, one time I threw Taco Bell and they said, oh, the person paid for yours. And I'm like, what? <laughs> just lightens your day it could be five bucks but you know it's just the thought that there are still good people out there it means a lot and as well, far as and the, you have no idea yeah as far as the um, suicide yeah. thing you know we all i think have been there at times and i think now I'll look back and i think you know it's like a really good book you're reading and then you just throw it out the window you're never going to know what happened next you know with your life if you cut it off now maybe the love of your life will enter or a child or win the lottery or, you know, whatever, some, just some kind of self realization or just, wow, this is just a beautiful day. You know, you won't have that next day. You won't right. know how it's going to end up. I mean, you might think this is the worst things are, could, can happen. It can't get any better, but see what happens tomorrow. You might be surprised. It might be worse than you think it's funny. I mean, you just just get a better outlook. You just not you're not going to know because we overthink things. We think I'm not worthy. I'm this and people are better off without me or, you know, the world ain't worth living, whatever, whatever the fear is. And sometimes it's not as bad. What we think is going to happen isn't as bad. It's uh, never as bad as we think it's going to be. <laughs> And sometimes we think, oh, nobody loves me and this and that. And you're not realizing how much you would have devastated someone for the rest of your life if you would have done that. Yeah. And that's heartbreaking to, to think that you could have really hurt someone, especially your children, your parents, you know, someone that um, or the people that find you, you know, what they're going to go through. You just don't think outside your little bubble. So yes. it's really nice that you come on. I know you're not feeling well. So thank you for coming on and uh, get some rest and enjoy your day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for uh -huh. letting me share my story. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.